very warm welcome everybody to the fifth session of the BCBR course being organized by Dr. B.R. Ambedkar State Institute of Medical Sciences, Mohali. Uh, today's talk will be centered around descriptive study designs. I am Dr. Manvi Singh, Assistant Professor in the Department of Pediatrics. So coming to the first um, slide, what are the kinds of study designs that are available when we conduct a study? They can be descriptive or analytical based on the number of groups that are being studied. In descriptive studies, only one group is thoroughly studied and analyzed, whereas in analytical studies, two groups are compared in order to uh, analyze and achieve a result. So coming to descriptive studies, they are divided based on the unit of the study. Is it an individual or is it a population? If the unit of study is an individual, it is uh, either a case report, a case series, or a cross-sectional survey. If the unit of uh, the study is a population, then it is an ecological study. Coming to analytical studies, in which we have two groups, they may be observational, in which no intervention is done, or experimental, in which the researcher will ac actively conduct the intervention on the groups. Uh, these are further subdivided. Observational studies are case control, cohort, and cross-sectional studies, and experimental studies are RCTs and non-randomized studies of intervention. We'll not be talking about analytical study designs in this talk. We will restrict ourselves only to descriptive study designs. Analytical study designs will be taken up in the next session. So coming to case reports, case reports are a detailed report of one case. Usually a rare disease or new manifestations of a common disease will be uh, described in a case report. It may be useful in hypothesis generation and most importantly, it creates awareness amongst clinicians and physicians regarding a new disease or a new manifestation of a disease. The second type of descriptive design is case series in which a larger group of cases are described, usually greater than 10. It is a common way of delineating the clinical picture of a rare disease or a new disease, and there is no comparator group. When COVID started happening earlier, case series were published gradually as the disease became very common and more information became available, uh, trials started and uh, analytical study designs were applied. So coming to the third type is cross-sectional survey. So cross-sectional survey is uh, the survey of an entire population in which every individual is counted at a single point of time and the disease burden is usually uh, measured or the characteristics of the entire population are measured. So this slide is borrowed from my previous session in which the rectangle represents the time frame. The disease here is cancer. Time frame is hence a long time frame of 10 years. The red dot represents onset of the disease. The arrow head represents the mortality due to the disease. So in a cross-sectional survey, what we do is at one single point of time, we see the, num the status of the population, number of people affected divided by the total population, and uh, that gives us the prevalence. So here it is two by six. So that is exactly what a cross-sectional survey aims to do. The unit of observation in a cross-sectional survey is an individual. The prevalence studies are a type of cross-sectional survey. Uh, observation can be done for more than one thing. So it, you can observe for one or more outcomes. You can observe for one or more exposure simultaneously. Uh, this lends a component of analytical study design to this cross-sectional survey. Recruitment of study subjects can be either the entire population can be studied or a sample can be taken from the population and then that sample alone can be studied this is to facilitate ease. So what are the uses of cross-sectional surveys? A disease burden can be categorized by calculating the prevalence. Who, what, and where is answered by a cross-sectional survey, whereas why is answered by an analytical survey or an analytical study design. 
health care delivery services can be planned based on the results of a cross-sectional survey. And based on these priorities can be set for healthcare uh, problems. Uh, generation of hypothesis is done when the exposure and the outcome is studied in the same cross section. Then we can also generate hypothesis to see and further test it by using analytical studies. And trends can be examined. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in a before and after survey, we can see uh, whether the disease frequency is increasing or decreasing. Iterative, that means repetitive cross-section surveys will also give you a trend of the disease. Uh, now coming to ecological study in which a population or group is the unit of analysis. So in this, there is no individual level information available on the distribution of exposure and the disease, but they, we just know for the entire population, what is the rate of the disease and what is the frequency of exposure. And based on that, we can generate a hypothesis that if we find those places with high rates of asthma also have high frequency of air pollution. So we can generate a hypothesis that maybe air pollution is causative in asthma. So that is a ecological study that uh, helps in hypothesis generation. So thank you. I hope this helps. We will meet tomorrow to discuss this uh, session. And thank you very much.